Howdy, it is I, Junk, on a early Saturday evening, I'd say. I guess you're going to see this in the middle or late Saturday evening, depending on how long YouTube takes to process it. And uh, I've been waiting to talk to you for a minute. <laughs> so let's do a quick health update. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. This uh, trigeminal neuralgia is kind of seasonal, and I think I'm coming out from the spring flare-up, so it won't come back in theory, job less, till the fall. So now it's just uh, tapering off meds, and i got to give it two weeks to make sure it's gone. But then I taper off meds, and I just pretend like it's not there until it shocks me in the face sometime when the leaves change color. So I want to thank everybody for their thoughts, prayers, support. Still coming back to watch me, you know, play badly. I appreciate it all. So thank you all very much. I, I, it really means a lot. I'm, I mean, I think the only thing that keeps us in this game is the community, because we know it's not the company. And you guys are just just fantastic. So that said, let's take a quick look at this hanger. You might notice one of these things is not like the others. Of course, it's the Elder Cherries. No, I'm talking about the Kid Titan back here. I leveled this, this Titan a long time ago because there was a leaderboard for leveling Titan stuff. And I had leveled one of every other kind of Titan. The only one... Um, I, I don't have the regular Minos, and I don't think I'd leveled a regular Heimdall. I might have. I don't remember. But everything else, and I don't have the, I don't have the new series, uh, limited edition, obviously. But I leveled all the, all the other Titans at the time. And I said, well, you know, let's level a kid. But then I just put it in the hangar and didn't think about it because I just wanted the leaderboard. So one game with this Titan is, uh, is up already by the time you're watching this. Uh, after that, I made w one little switch. I had the Titan repair amp, and I took it out for the damage controller. And the bottom line is the kid just is not a tough enough Titan to get a real big benefit over the damage controller, so that since the damage controller also gives you some offense, uh, I thought it was a better a better option. We'll see how right I was, because there's a game, the second game with the Kid Titan is at the end of this video. There's chapter numbers if you don't want to hear me talk. But, yeah, uh, the Kid Titan is not durable. That's probably why it's using giant high C boxes for armor on its shoulders. Though I do appreciate the kind of like Juggernaut-style helmet they gave it. Um, special edition kid win. That's what I'm saying. Other than that, this is the hangar you've been watching for some time for the most part. The Ares is different. It's the, also the, if you look, notice, it's the only robot, it's the only normal robot that doesn't have a quantum radar on it. Because there's so many stealth robots now. You've got the Imugi going stealth when it goes in the air, right? You've got I said Emugi, I don't know. I see it. I go both ways. I say Emuji, I say Emugi. I don't know what it is. This is why I'm not going to try to pronounce any of the laser names, because Lord help us all, I know I can't do that. But anyway, you've got the Emuji, or Emugi, whatever. You've got the Lynx now that's going to go into stealth. You've got the Beak Drones giving people stealth. There is so much stealth in the game that it, it's, it's almost like Shield Breaker used to be. Like, stealth is the new, stealth is the new Absorber in that there are so many of them that every robot has to have a shield breaker. Every, you know, every robot that can afford to has to have some method of dealing with stealth because there's just too much of it. And unfortunately, the Ares doesn't have that because it's just too fragile to not put the repair amp on it. And look, I, I'm building it as tanky as it can be built. Right? Sorry, not repair amp. You have to put the advanced repair unit. I'm, built it, I'm building it as tanky as it can be built. Here's the build. Uh, Wonder Worker is very helpful, but it's just not a tank robot. It's just it's a very fragile robot, and you, I, I, it will just, it will fall apart if you don't give it healing. So, other than that, everyone's got the quantum radar. The Ares, I like it. I think the pilot does make it more useful. Is it meta viable? Yeah, if you're crazy. I mean, if if you got a screw loose like me then absolutely, go run it. Otherwise, you're signing up for a world of hurt. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it is fun, and you can surprise people with the absorber. The The shorter cooldown does help, because that's the, the pilot's ability. That and more, more damage from your, your built-in weapon, but I have yet to actually see that come into play, really. So this is Vulture's Angler build, except... He was saying to use the traditional skill, but they don't give it to anglers. And we're going to talk about skills anglers don't get very shortly, I assure you. 
but uh, so sorry, misclicked there. The concept here is this is not doing what an angler does. This is meant to be like a mobile, a more mobile, occasionally phasing behemoth that's carrying around a strong shield at the cost of three of its heavies became lights. So if you think about it in that way, that's why there's physical shield expert, thrill seeker. I mean, who would put thrill seeker on an angler? You wouldn't unless it's actually a sniper, right? <laughs> and with Basil's eye and the 10% damage from that, this is actually not a bad sniper, I found. It's, it, I mean, it, you can, it opens up a, a play style you wouldn't normally think of. And a lot of times when people are going to come try to take out the behemoth, which, let's, let's take a look at Vera here. We've seen Vera can be very deadly in games. We've also seen that when the behemoth gets taken out, it tends to be a robot that's more mobile, whether it's like an emoji that flies in or a serif that flies in, something that can just get to it and, and behind it faster, maybe when it's gravity amped. Uh, or a titan, but what are you going to do if a titan comes for you, really, other than hide? Well, the ability to phase away from those bots, quickly move away, and then unload on them again from range again makes that ranged angler kind of a clever build. And it helps that it's just about indistinguishable from a second angler I have in the lineup. <laughs> Other than the, I, I I ran out of the of the ardent version of the of the light lasers. It looks the same on the battlefield. They've got the same drone, the same skin. But this is actually just a regular-ish angler, meant to fight like an angler. So it's meant to be. This was meant to be the angler that can fight up close, but also has range. Versus. The angler on the left, which is meant to be a ranged angler who is trying to stay behind cover and get away from you if, if you get close to it. So it's two bots that look almost identical, but have drastically different play styles. The one on the right wants to get in close with you and duke it out. The one on the left wants to be as far as possible. So it's, it's just a fun, a fun added layer of texture for enemies to deal with that they have to remember that they have to look for that one weapon right now, and when that gets replaced, I don't know what they have to do. Pay more attention, I guess, is the answer to that. Cool. So, let's talk about a couple more topics, and let's go to, to, to a web browser to talk about them. First topic I want to talk about is the Wonder Worker ability for angler pilots, because this is an official response from Pixonic, and as you can see, I've got Wonder Worker... These are just screenshots that I highlighted it. I've got Wonder Worker on three different angler pilots. So at one point, it, it was a thing. But it isn't gone. And I mean, But it's gone. So I asked the forum. And the wisdom of the forum was, it probably got removed because it technically shouldn't have ever worked. Here's the issue. Healing in war robots is treated as negative damage. Being phase shifted prevents you from experiencing damage. And the angler's ability counts as a phase shift. Well, the Wonder Worker ability says, upon activating its ability, angler immediately repairs a portion of its maximum durability. Well, upon activating its ability, the angler is immediately in phase shift and cannot experience healing, a.k.a. negative damage. So, at some point... War Robots just removed this ability from the list and didn't say anything to anybody. And the response I got from them said that, please note that some skills may not be available for certain robots. Wonder Worker is not available for Angler since it is incompatible with Angler's ability. Which I think is confirmation that the forum was right. Once again, that the Wonder Worker ability never actually worked. It's just in the, in the weirdness of the game... Occasionally, maybe sometimes it did, because if you were laggy enough or the game was lagging enough, it's possible it, that there was an instant before you entered phase shift that, that registered that, that ability. But generally speaking, it doesn't work and it shouldn't work on paper. So that said, I'm, I am not, I'm not removing these, these abilities, because looking through the other abilities for Angler, the one I'd, re I'd replace it with is Mechanic. Mechanic does so little healing that... I don't know. I, plus, it's cool to have a pilot with a skill that's impossible. 
Like this is why it's it, you know it's why it's cool to run a boa sometimes because <laughs> the fact that you have a boa is cool. Let alone that you Mark III it. Like uh, I don't know some really cool kids I know hypothetically. So that takes that's the answer to that. If you have the Wonder Worker skill on your pilot, you can choose between swapping it for something that actually has a function or just keeping it as a fun little story. Plus, at some point, the angler is going to rotate out of the meta. And at that point, really, it's going to be much cooler to have the unavailable skill. So I'm saying keep it. You do what you want to do, though, because it's not working either way. Uh, let's talk about War, War Robots Frontiers, because I saw that, I think it was Adrian, somebody was doing a key giveaway for, for War Robots Frontiers, and I kind of had to laugh. Um, this is the price to buy it, you know, on, on the aftermarket right here. And I did buy the, the platinum pack. I did, you know, cause I didn't know what was going to happen. I know where it was going to go. So I pre-ordered, which is how most people lose money. <laughs> but let's face it. If there's one thing that this channel has taught us, it's that I, I'm not unwilling to throw away money. So I got it. And, uh, now they're giving away keys. I think I saw, I want to say I saw a giveaway of like 20 keys. Well, the, the only launchers for this, there's a My Games launcher, which I've never heard of anyone actually using. I had to like really Google to figure out how to get it. But the vast majority of players are going to be using Steam. And in fact, the giveaway is for Steam keys. So let's take a look at how we're doing on Steam. Oh, I should refresh. I want to be fair. Oh, womp womp. 26 players in War Robots on Steam. Okay. Well, I want to remind you that War Robots Frontiers, like War Robots, is a six-on-six -six game. So, there's slightly more than two possible games, assuming everybody got sorted into the same game. But because there's also levels, <laughs> right? They're not all sorted in the same game. So, if the giveaway was for 20 keys, holy smokes, if those people actually log on, we could be looking at nearly doubling the player base. And how bad is this? Well, let's compare it once again to Marvel's Avengers, a game that we know is dead, is dying, it will be shut down, it has been announced, it's being sunsetted, there is no progress that you can make that will last because it's a live service game, this will all evaporate. So how many people are playing Marvel's Avengers right now, knowing that game is going to vanish? And let's reload to be fair, 311. So there are more than 10 times as many players playing a game that will go away than are choosing to play War Robots Frontiers. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and say this game is a colossal failure. And yet, and here's, here's the big joke. I look, at, look at Adrian's page here. He released a video, Fenrir has new Unchained ability. Let's, let's I, you know, I, I got to reload to make sure I'm not cutting him short. Yeah, he got... 2.5 thousand views. 2.5 thousand views on, on the Fenrir video for a game that presently has 26 people playing it. So yeah, I bet they're giving away keys. I bet they are, and I bet it's not going to work. When you're most famous slash infamous for releasing a game on PC that invites PC hackers in with no attempt to stop them and no timeline for when you might actually attempt to stop them, you will come to discover nobody wants to play the game you release on PC. If you can't stop hackers, don't release a PC game. P.S. I did play it, and the gameplay, it was like a worse version of Gears of War 3. Which, I mean, to be fair, Gears of War 3 was a pretty, pretty great game. So there's room downward from there that wouldn't be terrible. But if you're going to have cover shooter type mechanics, like the over-the-shoulder view and the dodging, maybe it would behoove your game to have cover in it. Just a thought. Just a thought. You do you, Pixonic. Did you get any players while we were talking? Because I just want to applaud you if you did. No, you didn't. Well... Keep on trucking there, I guess, but let's go back to not the game that died before it, it, it was ever a thing, but the game they're killing actively now that it is a thing with the Ultimate Spectre. If you didn't watch Predator's video, and you probably should, maybe I'll try to tuck a, a, tuck a card up there. Essentially, this is going to be a new robot. They have released no information as to how it will be acquired. 
So be aware. We don't know. It could be a new currency type. It could be lots of an existing currency. Or most likely, it will just be huge amounts of cash. Or some combination thereof. But the idea is to take classic combinations of robots and then release them as a new Ultimate Edition that's viable in the current meta. And this is their first attempt at that, and this was on the test server, although the, the robot skin wasn't there, but the weapon skin was. And it was Orkins that did more damage and reloaded faster. The one kind of funny thing is that the description said they had a 350 meter range, and Orkins have a 300 meter range, and the actual range was not updated. So whoever filled that out probably just legit didn't know the range of Orkins. <laughs> That's always a good sign when the people who are who are implementing your Ultimate Edition weapons have no idea how the weapon works. But whatever. Uh, it was very deadly, as anything released by Pixonic would be for this. And Predator, Predator's feelings were mixed because he really wants to see more classic robots come back to the meta, but he doesn't want to see them come back in a freshly monetized, you know, version make the make the classic ones work and this is just mark 3 tokens all over again which suggests that war robots has entered a new phase of a death spiral here where the power creep is now so so fast that you can see like maybe i'm wrong mark 3 tokens still feel pretty new to me you you may feel differently but to me like we just got mark 3 tokens to take our specter to the to the highest possible iteration of what it's supposed to be. Remember, Mark III tokens are supposed to be for the prestige. They're supposed to be the thing for, for dedicated players. And now there's the Ultimate Edition Spectre. Well, I'm guessing it's not for casuals. So this is that power creep where the thing we sold you as the Ultimate Version is no longer the Ultimate Version. And it's killed lots of online games because the monetization scheme results in, you know, it'll be the Mega Ultimate next, and the Super Mega Ultimate next. Pretty much every iteration of, of, of superlatives they added to Power Rangers will be used to describe a new version of a robot. And it really disturbs in some way the meta-churn that they were going for. Because the, the ongoing monetization viability of, of War Robots, hypothetically, was we're going to nerf everything we sold you once you bought it, and then make you buy new things that we will nerf later. So, it wasn't so much that there was necessarily ongoing power, power creep. There were moments when there was power creep. When the Dash robots came out, that was a universe that was like a sea change in what the power of, of robots could be. And ro robots that weren't Dash bots just got slaughtered, which is why I walked away from the game. I was like, this is ridiculous. This is just the power creep that kills games. But they then sort of settled into this meta churn, which, say what you will about the meta churn, had the virtue of the actual top level of power didn't necessarily have to change. It was just going to be set at whatever the new robot was, and everything else would be nerfed around it. So that you could indefinitely continue that cycle. Well, the problem is once you start adding things like the ultimate version, you know, what happens when that cycle continues to churn? Are we now balancing around the ultimate version? Is the ultimate version automatically rebalanced with every release? Which it may be because of the new sort of unstable active module they're talking about that's going to be rebalanced every... If, if you didn't hear about the, the unstable, there's going to be like something in that active module slot you can put in that's like the unstable module, and it will give you additional abilities. It will cost more, but it will change from patch to patch. So the one on the test server gave you... Inst you instead, you get 10% healing with an advanced repair uh, an advanced repair mod. This one gave you 8% healing and then something like 6% extra damage or something like that. So... Are we saying the Ultimate Edition will be recalibrated to new metas? Or are we saying that, fast forward in two or three years, there's going to be a new Mega Ultimate Spectre? Either one of those feels a little ridiculous. If you are genuinely saying that the Ultimate Edition will be the final endgame robot for people to acquire, then what are Mark III tokens, I guess? And like, what would be the point of Mark III-ing any robot as opposed to acquiring the eventual ultimate edition of it. I, I suppose because if, you know, at, it depends how fast they release them. It might be, if I'm waiting for, for the ultimate Orochi, I might be waiting a very long time. 
So it looks very cool. I'm sure it'll be very fun to play. I'm kind of depressed because of the overall trend that it seems to be part of. Cool. That's enough of my uh, blathering on. Why don't we watch some gameplay and see how the kid does on its sophomore outing. Okay, we're dropping in now to the factory, and I think I dropped the Ares first here. I thought about it for a minute, as I am now, but I think the Ares won, yeah. So this is the Ares with the new Warren pilot that gives you more damage from the built-in weapon and shorter cooldown on your ability, which is good synergy with Wonder Worker. I found, I find it still doesn't do enough healing, I still need the advanced repair mod. Somebody's already capped for us, and I'm moving in, and I can't quite tell at this distance in the game what it is that's on the other side of that wall. I come to find out, and I think we will come to find out together. Whoa. Yeah, I sort of forgot we had a visitor up there. Nice to kill another with uh, a lowly Ares. So I decide this guy is not going to give me space, and I come to find out it's a leech. So, not really what I wanted to find, but I do manage to get away long enough for my ability to come back and return the favor. This is not a position I would normally like to be in. This is a little close to enemy spawn for me. And something's going on at sea, but I, I'm not in no position to do anything constructive. So I'm hoping I can get one more use of my ability before I lose the bot. That's really what I'm going for. It comes up again, and my recollection is I don't manage to take this guy out because, yeah, he phases. So I just say, okay, whatever. I notice there's a big battle going on at enemy home. I'll be part of that. So this is a good choice for up-close brawling in the current meta. With the spears, you got the redeemer for some up-close damage, and the quantum radar to deal with the... Emoji when it shows up. So I'm, I'm feeling comfortable right now. You know, we got the four cap going. That's always nice. And with the quantum radar, the, the emoji is more annoying than dangerous to me. It really doesn't want to be shooting at me for very long because that means I'm shooting at it. He chose wrong, to be clear. Uh, Seraph coming in, coming in. I'm pretty sure I use my ability. Yeah, because just why let him shoot at me while he's flying in? We don't have to hold the beacon right now. We let him get as close as he wants, and then he'll be on the ground, and I'll be out of I'll be out of my ability. So people keep playing feather destriers. I don't know why. That's what a feather destrier does. Moving here towards the enemy secondary. I was slightly surprised about the scorpion. What surprised me was that it came to take me out and not to take its home back. Interesting choice. But it did live a, a decent amount of time, and you know, it's, it's, it was built well with the, uh, the last stand, like, it should have a good long time, but I, I also have a few tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> this is like, well, I've got the quantum radar, so he teleports behind me, finds that I have quantum radar, teleports back, and that's when I'm just like, I I'm done with this, I'll just take you out with, with my ability. I expect I'm going to die here, but rather than blow up, I guess I just go for two more kills. <laughs> uh, not the world's strongest robot at this point, but I, I, I was, fingers crossed, hoping, hoping to go for the living legend. Although, no expectation whatsoever that that would be possible, and surely enough, that is not how it went down. And I saw we got three enemies sort of buzzing around, or buzzing around their secondary, I should say. I forgot we, we switched sides here. So this is maybe the good time for the kid to show up, and <laughs> little team support there. This is a great map. If you're going to play a kid, this is a great map because all of the different angles that give you cover, depending on where you're standing, force people to play in certain limited ways. And there's the oven ability. Doesn't help when they phase, but it also means that they don't get to hide necessarily. Getting, getting a lot of support from the Minos right now, but that'll change in just a moment because he'll go off to 
do some important things on the other side and I'll be here getting shot in the back. You know, this is another example of don't play this way. If you see the Titans walking away and doesn't see you, why would you shoot as opposed to just take the beacon? Why put me on notice that I should turn around? For that little bit of damage? So we got one kill there. Second kill coming up. And th that's a, a bug that that uh, the Indra ability continues past the Indra's death, because you do take damage from it. And I don't have a quantum sensor on this, but I do have the oven ability. Or is it stove? Is it called stove? I forget. I get confused. But you, you know what I'm talking about. You should look where you're backing up into. <laughs> so triple kill for a level for, for a tier 1 titan. I felt okay about that as far as Titan performance goes, and uh, for some reason nobody was going for this this uh, beacon. I figured let's just go get their home again. Sure enough, as soon as I get there, there's somebody there, right? Like, couldn't see anybody there, but when I get there, there's somebody there. That, that's just fine, though. And it seems like they're starting to mech already. Yeah, this, I, su I was surprised at how long the kid lasted in this situation. I mean, that's a meta robot still. And certainly at long range, his weapons are far more effective. So I was surprised I managed to you know, scratch him. But the beacon bar is saying the game's almost over. And, uh... This is the the range sniper build, so not ideal that he's running close, but I feel with the be with the beacon bar, I don't have to be that good. I just have to be good enough. He manages to to get my, to get me to phase, but the game is over. So let's see how we did overall there. Eleven kills, five beacons. I think that's a pretty good run, although third place. Once again, someone please explain the scoreboard to me. I do not understand. You cannot convince me to 300k damage, which is borderline nothing, is worth a first place over somebody with more beacons and more kills. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's totally irrational. Unless they're, basing, unless they're basing honor points off of the Titan you drop, in which case, yes, I suppose, I get fewer honor points from my Titan, but whatever. So... Thank you if you've watched this far into the video. If you're a dog or cat left at home alone, you're a good puppy or a kitty, I'm sure your parents are going to bring you a treat when they come back. I will talk to you very soon. Later.